Okay. Okay. Ready? You should be like. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Okay. Ready. Okay. When it comes to buying kitchen gear, it can be tough to keep costs down. Some kitchen tools can be pretty pricey. But you don't necessarily need to spend a lot to get a lot. There's a ton of great gadgets that don't cost that much. Hannah and I have put together a lineup of some of our favorite tools, and each one is under $15, so you can decide if they're right for you. First up, Lisa with her favorites. First on my list, vegetable peelers. I love this thing. It's the Kuhn Rikon Swiss vegetable peeler, and I use it at home all the time. It's incredibly sharp, it's durable. This thing can whip through any kind of produce really quickly. This has a carbon steel blade. It is like a fine chef's knife. It's very sharp and it stays sharp. It has a little ridge on the back that holds the cutting blade at exactly the right depth. So you've seen peelers where when you're peeling, you're getting so much food that the carrot is all faceted at the end. I measured the thickness of peels from a bunch of different peelers and these peels are beautiful. They're so nice and thin, you can almost see through them. You're not throwing away half the carrot as you peel it. And you've also seen peelers where you're going over the same spot three, four times just to get something off of that food. This gets just the right depth. It really is kind of the Goldilocks moment. This is called the bridge, this area that holds the ends of the blade. And this is just about an inch from blade to the back of the bridge. And that means that food can pass through and not get stuck. We've seen some where it's very, very close. Food is jamming up in there. You're constantly stopping, pulling it out. We just don't see those kinds of jams with this perfect little blade. It's very lightweight, it's plastic. Now you might think, oh, well, that's cheap. I want something heavy. If you're actually doing a whole bunch of food prep, your hand is fatigued. You're trying to control a heavy object. This is very light and very sharp. And you can just flick, 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 and your carrot is peeled perfectly. So this is a vegetable peeler, but it can do so much more. You can make Parmesan shavings to put on your salad. You can even make chocolate curls for your desserts. I put them on cupcakes and all kinds of things. You can hide a lot of frosting sins this way. You first, you just want to warm it a little bit with your hand, and then you basically drag it across the top, and you can make different widths depending on where you're pressing and your chocolate. You can make cool little shavings like that, and you just pile them up on top of your cake. Chocolate melts just above body temperature. So if you get it a little bit warm first, it will actually curl the chocolate and you'll get a beautiful, there we go, look at that. And if you do it right, you can get long, gorgeous curls with this. And like I said, this is super lightweight. It's three eighths of an ounce for the whole thing. Our test cooks were carrying this in their chef coat pockets uh, because they could just have it there whenever they needed it. So after you've peeled all those vegetables, the next thing you might want to take out is your bench scraper. This is a seriously undervalued tool in the home kitchen. This one's by Dexter Russell, it's our favorite. Let me just show you, boom. You're not picking up a million little pieces, whether it's peels or if the pieces of carrot that you've chopped up to put right into the frying pan or to clean your bench after you you know, had flour on here. This is your tool. This is our favorite for a bunch of reasons. First, it has a nice sharp straight edge. It's not gonna cut you, but you can use this little corner to open packaging. It has a nice handle that's grippy. This has got a little textured plastic on it, so it's not gonna slip if your hands are wet or oily. It's NSF rated, and that means it's rated to not harbor any bacteria, any cracks or areas where it could trap food. It gets very, very clean. It can go in a dishwasher and be sanitized and it'll be good to go. And it's made to be used over and over every day by professionals, so it's sturdy and durable, it's gonna last. But it's also fairly narrow so that you can get down at a really low angle under food and lift it. Now it's called a bench scraper because it's your bench, your workbench, and this is a baking tool originally. It's used to clear flour from your workbench or to divide up dough or to move dough around. I use it when I'm making sourdough, when I'm doing those folds and turns that you have to do at certain points while you're waiting for it to develop its rise before baking. It's really a terrific tool and you keep finding uses for it. We also like it for smashing garlic cloves, picking up herbs when you've chopped herbs. It's a great way to just pick it all up at once and you're not in there catching things that are moving around. So again, this is our winner by Dexter Russell. Bench scrapers are the most underused gadget in home kitchens. If you don't have one, go get one. So next up on some of our bargain tools, 
I would say our paring knife is a wonderful thing to get. This is by Victorinox. It's the Victorinox Fibrox Pro paring knife. It's a spear point, three and a quarter inch long blade. And really the beautiful thing about this is the same brand as our favorite chef knife, super inexpensive, under 10 bucks, beat paring knives that were seven or eight times as much money. It has the most wonderful little sharp blade, a nice sharp tip. It nestles very comfortably in your hands. You can choke up on it. You can do tasks that require a little precision, but it's nice to have a paring knife to just get in and do those little jobs that a chef knife feels like overkill. Maybe you wanna get in and have a little bit of little detail work. I have some shallots here. I've got a little tiny shallot. So you can do things like slice garlic or, you know, mince a shallot. It's so sharp that wherever you put it, it goes and it's really fantastic. I am a home chef. I am not a trained chef, but even I can get beautiful little cuts with this thing. We believe there's really three knives you kind of need in the kitchen, and then you can build out from there a chef knife, a paring knife, and a serrated knife, and you can do most things. This is a great choice because it's inexpensive. It does everything the more expensive ones do. It's a workhorse, and you will be grabbing this knife and using it every day. We compared this to many, many paring knives, and some of them are too big and clunky. They don't fit neatly in your hand. They're not comfortable. They don't have a very narrow blade. This tapers from the handle down to a very tiny, narrow point that can get into the smallest little area and cut. It's called a spear point for a reason. And it tapers from a narrow spine down to a very narrow blade. So it has very nice precision and it really glides through food. It also has a really comfortable handle that's made of this plastic Fibrox. It is, a, again, a food service product. This is meant to be used by people in the industry all day long when they're prepping food. So it's durable, it's easy to clean, and it won't trap any food in the, in the area between the handle and the blade. You can choke up on it very comfortably because it's got a rounded edge to the front of the bolster here. So you can hold it very closely in your hand and control this blade very easily. My mom was one of those ladies who caught everything in the air with a paring knife. She never cut on a cutting board with a chef knife. So I learned to do that too. It's only three and a quarter inches long. A longer knife, you're getting into utility knife territory. You're getting into chef knife territory. You want a small, precise, knife that you can fully control and do precision work. So this is your ticket, the spear point three and a quarter inch Victorinox Fibrox Pro. So another tool that is well under $15 and super useful is a jar spatula. This is our favorite. It won against many other competitors. It's by GIR, which stands for Get It Right, and it comes in lots of beautiful colors, obviously. It's a great jar spatula, but it's good for so much more. This is made of silicone. It has a steel interior, so it has you know a little bit of flexibility at the tip, but generally nice rigidity all the way through. It's one piece, so you can't get food stuck anywhere. It's very easy to clean. It's very comfortable in your hand, very long and slim. It can get into the bottom of jars. So, you know, here I have some mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is all the way down the bottom here. So you can get down the bottom of this jar and get the last traces of everything, and get your money's worth. And this spatula, keeps your hands out of the coop. We have them here in the test kitchen. If you're ever a little bit late getting your stuff in the general equipment room, you're not gonna find one of these because the test cooks grab one every single day, even if they're not gonna be using jars because this is so useful for so many other functions in the kitchen and people just love to use them. They're, they're heat resistant up to a pretty high temperature so you can put them in a pan. A jar spatula, it's a good bargain, great tool, and this is our favorite by GIR. If you've followed us for any period of time, you know that we love rimmed baking sheets. A good, sturdy rimmed baking sheet is an incredibly versatile addition to your kitchen. Have you ever had a sheet pan warp and go boing, or just be uneven, or have super low sides? Those pans just aren't as useful. Yeah, sure, you can cook a couple cookies on them, but with a big, sturdy rim like this, the pan truly turns into a container, a roasting rack. You can hold fried foods on it, toast nuts as you see here. They are incredibly versatile. I want to introduce you to my favorite under 15 version of the sheet pan. This is the quarter sheet pan. I also love the eighth of a sheet pan, which is half of this. These smaller sheet pans, this might be a little strong, but they kind of changed my life. You know, a bigger sheet pan, you're kind of wrestling. Often, like if you're toasting a few nuts, 
there's all this blank space around which can lead to uneven cooking and burning. If you size your pan to what you're cooking, you will get more even results. So using a smaller pan actually gets you more even results if you're cooking a smaller amount of food. They're also easier to clean. Like think about turning this thing around. It's a lot easier than washing a bigger sheet pan. I use this, I would say actually more than my bigger sheet pan at the moment. These also fit into toaster ovens, which is fantastic. And when you pair a sheet pan of any size with a rack and a lid, that's when it's truly a game changer. But you can roast meats on there. You can drizzle things in chocolate and the chocolate drips off underneath for like a perfectly beautiful dipped strawberry. This is our winning small rack by Checkered Chef. It's perfectly tailored to this pan, so it doesn't slide around everywhere. It's like a well-tailored suit. And then you add this lid on top and it turns the whole thing, I'll show you this, into a container. Now you have this container. And I use the lids of my sheet pans all the time. You have a storage container now. You can stack stuff. This is really sturdy. So you can put this in your refrigerator. It's a nice, um, efficient shape to store in there. You can stack stuff on top of it. For like a recent holiday, I made a bunch of these beautiful little cakes, put the lid on, and took them right to the party because everything was nice and contained, really easy. Professional bakers have been using these lids, and these pans are also from professional kitchens. And finally, us. Us consumers, us home cooks have gotten the pro level stuff at home. They've started to trickle down to us. So in our testing of rim baking sheets, we found out that all rim baking sheets will warp a little bit, but a well-made pan with a really sturdy rolled edge here will warp less. That's why pros use these pans because they're extra sturdy and they won't get bent out of shape. We also really love this higher rim here. When you have a really high sturdy rim, if there's like a really juicy piece of meat on here, if you want to roast a ton of veggies, you know, it can contain things and that just makes it just that much more versatile. If you're only familiar with the bigger ones, try out one of the smaller sizes and you'll be surprised how much you're reaching for it. All right, so next up for me is a mini whisk, which all of the like very serious Cooks Illustrated chefs, they will geek out about these tiny, cute little whisks. We love an all purpose whisk too, but these little ones, first of all, adorable. But second of all, these can be incredibly useful. I reach for mine all the time. Right here I have this balsamic mustard vinaigrette. You can use a big whisk for that, of course, but what the little whisk allows you to do is use whatever vessel you want for your vinaigrette. I wanna put my vinaigrette in a little jar. I wanna mix it in a little jar so I can do everything right in there without dirtying additional dishes, whisking a uh, can of coconut milk that hasn't completely combined. You know, you can reincorporate right inside that little can. This is one of those tools too, where you're like, you buy it for one thing, and then all of a sudden you find yourself using it for all different things. So it just makes things a little more convenient and allows you to sort of like finagle into different containers that your big whisk might not be as agile in. All right, so I have our winner here from Tavolo. So we found out that actually, it make, can make a big difference what brand you buy for mini whisk. And that may be surprising, but we noticed a trend. Those with broader heads and more loops whisked more efficiently. Those with narrower heads and fewer loops, they took longer to combine ingredients. And you know, any way I can take a shortcut and do less work, I certainly will. All right, so the handle mattered too. You know, length, we like medium length handles. Some were so small, you were like, dee, 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 dee. that didn't work. Some were bigger and they had, you had to choke up on them to actually get control. This was a Goldilocks situation. We like the medium one. We also preferred ones that were a little bigger. You know, some of these were like holding onto a pencil. They were so narrow, it's hard to get any sort of like force through your hand into the whisk. So a little bit of a thicker handle gave us something to hold on to. We also really liked handles that did not have a loop here. Some of them have a little loop here, like for hanging, which sounds nice, but that metal loop dug into your hand while you're whisking, which was not fun at all. We also liked when the loops were completely sealed where they joined the handle. Some of them weren't and like gunk just gets in there. It's super annoying to clean and pretty gross. I think if you have this whisk around, you will use it way more than you think. That's totally happened in my household. And there's a reason why all these chefs are obsessed with these little things. They're super fun and actually really useful. Okay, next up, seafood scissors. You might have seen us talk about these in our episode with celebrity chef Tiffany Faison. We actually showed her these and I think she was pretty impressed. Wow. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's a joke. I, color me impressed. I'm gonna put these in my bag on the way out. <laughs> Security! I have never had more friends than when I tested these in the kitchen and I had piles of lobster, king crab legs, and shrimp just surrounding me. Everybody wanted to come over and say hi. But it actually was a really interesting testing because I didn't realize how amazing these could be. Like, I hate prepping shrimp, and these truly make it easier. Here are our winners by RSVP. I tested all kinds of scissors, 
And some of them just weren't agile enough. They weren't strong enough to get through the tough, tough shells. Others were not shaped nicely. See this gentle curve? This allows you to sneak right up the back of a shrimp shell, right like this. It makes the whole process of shelling shrimp super tidy and quick. So the gently curved blades, they're actually very lightly serrated so they could really grip and crunch through shells. You know, sometimes shells are slippery and serrations really help these scissors get a hold on things. You can see it perfectly mimics the curve of the shrimp shell. And that is an intentional design because if you think about regular scissors, they're straight. You end up having to take like 50 tiny little bites, like deep, 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 whereas these one clean swoop. So these are our winner from RSVP and they truly were Super sturdy, had such a great design, and they're not just for shrimp, you know, they're for lobsters, crabs, you know those little lobster crackers and all those little tools that you get when you have a lobster? I won't even use those anymore. I get out my scissors, everybody else can use whatever they want, but I'm claiming the scissors because they make the whole thing so much easier. Next up, champagne savers. So champagne savers are designed to save those bubbles. It, it does happen where there's leftover champagne. It's never happened to me, but I've heard, I've heard it happens. You can actually have a bottle of champagne over three days with our winner here from Cilio. This can actually keep this fresh and bubbly for a whole week, which is super impressive. It wouldn't last that long in my house, but you could if you wanted to. Now I know this might not be as useful as say like a paring knife or a cutting board, but let me have a little fun here because this was probably one of the best testings I have ever done. So this just clips right onto the top of the bottle. This is one reason why this one is super easy to attach. Literally you just put it on and then to detach you simply press the top. So it got this little clicker and you see inside there, it just really clamps down onto the bottle and keeps the bubbles inside. A lot of the models we tested, either they were annoying to use or yeah, maybe they kept it for a day, but guess what? So does a mason jar and a lid. If you really want your champagne to last for like three days or even up to a week, this dedicated champagne saver does such a fantastic job. This is three days old at this point, if I may. Let's check it out for science. Can you hear that? I can hear that and look at those bubbles. It's a hard job, but somebody's got to do it. It's deliciously effervescent and bubbly still. I know this is not a core product, but it works so well. The Cilio does. Do not mess around with other brands. They just won't work. But this one is such a fun, inexpensive little gift, and it really does work well and keep your champagne super bubbly. With my four favorites and Lisa's four favorites, you have a really good start on some cost-effective, useful kitchen gear. So for more information on all the gear we talked about today, check out the links below or see americastestkitchen.com. Yeah, let us know in the comments, what's your favorite gear under $15? What did we miss in our lineup? I'm already thinking of things. A microplane. Oh, dang mm. it. Anyways, <laughs> make sure to like this video and hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode.